hello everyone so last time it seems uh, uh, it did not record the lecture so that recording we don't have so now i am recording it on my computer as well so we'll just recap what we did in the last class we took a wave equation and we said that if you uh use a ftcs uh, scheme or btcs also where you have central differencing for space and let's say this is the wave equation do u by do t plus c do u by do x equal to 0 where c is positive that means wave is traveling in the positive x direction and if you analyze the stability of this you will see that it is unconditionally unstable that means there is no condition for which it will give a stable solution on a computer the round of error will continue to increase okay then we said that there is a scheme called upwind scheme for discretizing the space derivative which is shown here for positive c the upwind scheme says that you take ui and the previous point i minus 1 if c is negative you take the forward point i plus 1 and the current point i Okay. and then the condition that you get for stability is c delta t by delta x less than or equal to 1 if you satisfy this condition uh, then your solution will be stable okay and then uh, we just wrote the amplification factor g we did not derive it we directly wrote this 1 minus c delta t by delta x this whole thing and we said we can extract two quantities from here one is the amplitude of this mod g and the other is this phi that is the phase so how are these important we will see that later on we saw it actually in brief so we said that this mod g is equal to this uh, which is the maximum value of this in one sense being very conservative okay these two will cancel out it just becomes 1 plus mu square uh, under root and then we also derived the exact amplification factor for the exact solution of this wave equation and we found that that came out to be 1 which means that for a wave which is traveling uh, the amplitude does not change with time or space so the amplitude remains the same but we saw here that amplitude is not the same okay yeah it is something else there is this new added here so it will be something else and you can plot this uh, g versus theta and you will see that it comes out to be less than 1 okay so it decays so this conservative estimate is not a good estimate of this because this gives you 1 plus new square to the power half which is greater than 1 but actually if you plot it versus theta so this theta versus g if you plot you will find that it is always less than 1 okay and then we defined uh, these terms numerical dissipation and dispersion 
dissipation means that the if you compare the actual amplification of the actual solution so the solution at the next time step divided by the solution amplitude at the previous time step that is the wave height at the next time step in this case divided by wave height at the previous time step so that is one in this case that versus the amplification factor of the error okay or the numerical amplification factor both will be same actually because both satisfy the same equation so the exact ge and the numerical g if you compare both of them you will see that the numerical g is different from the exact g and this is known as numerical dissipation that in the original equation there was no dissipation but in the numerical solution you get some uh, difference in the amplitude as the time passes by so we will also see it in matlab how that looks like for a wave equation okay and this is numerical dispersion which means that the actual phi the phi exact the exact phase uh, what is it you can see here for the wave equation we can derive it right now and the phase that you get for uh, the numerical solution and note that this phi or g we have derived for a particular mode of the fourier component okay for a particular fourier component there is a fourier series with m modes or infinite modes and we took the mth mode of that we had km uh, as the wave number there so for that particular wave of that particular wave number we derived phi or g and what quantity here depends on that wave number this theta so it depends on which wave you are talking about this g will depend on that and also this phi will depend on that so here in this case what happens is there is a lag or lead in phase for every particular wave so some wave of a higher frequency may be traveling faster than a wave of a lower frequency so these waves separate out and you see these individual waves here some waves are leading some are lagging where this was a superposition of all the waves now the waves are leading and lagging these individual components so i hope this was clear uh, if this is clear we can go to an example on matlab let me know if you have any question okay so here is the code uh, this wave dot m let me start from the beginning this is same as that for the heat equation we have length of the string number of points on the string where we want to have our data for velocity for wave height and for x this is the dx or delta x our grid size these are the number of time steps you can change that t final is 1 up to which point we want the solution dt is the time step cfl number which is c delta t by delta x because that's what appears in the equation let me go back to the equation here yes so if you take everything to the right hand side here you get 
u i n plus one equal to c delta t by delta x negative of that because we took it to the right hand side and then u i n minus u i minus one n there is no division here we already took delta x outside and plus u i n So this is the explicit method where we are able to express wave height at next time step n plus one in terms of wave heights at time step n. This is the previous time step or the current time step. So this c delta t by delta x we are calling that as CFL, which is our CFL number, and that should be less than one. Okay, for it to be stable. So let us go back to the MATLAB code. Okay. So we took CFL as 0.1, and then U new uh, we created an array of an X point similar to T new in the thermal uh, diffusion code. Then U new one and U new N X. These are the boundary conditions. For the wave equation, which we take as zero, zero. So wave heights are zero at the boundaries. We are saying so it is a, a tied string, maybe at both ends. Then we are saying we are initializing wave height in certain region uh, from i equal to five to fifteen. We are saying that wave height is one in this region. From five to fifteen, and then we are saying u old equal to u new. So u old is also an array, which is same as u new in the beginning. And then this x is for plotting uh, this wave height versus x. So just after this, let us plot the initial condition. So we will say plot x versus u new or old. Doesn't matter. And then we'll do hold on, and then we'll plot x versus u new after uh, a few time steps. It can be ten time steps or hundred time steps. So here, if you remember, this loop is similar to that what we used uh, for thermal diffusion. We are solving for i equal to two to n x minus one. We are leaving out the boundary points here because they are fixed. We know that u new I is equal to minus CFL U old I minus U old I minus one. So note that we are using upwind scheme here I and I minus one. If velocity was negative, that is if CL was CFL was negative, that is if C was negative, then we will have to use I plus one minus I. Okay, and then we can plot this. Let us. Uh, do this. Okay. So as you can see, this blue color line, that is the initial solution, and this uh, red color line or orange color line, that is the solution at uh, n time steps after 10 time steps. so you can see that there is some diffusion here this is not very sharp and here also let us go to some more time steps let's say 100 time steps okay now you can see it very clearly that it, there has been a lot of diffusion here the width here has increased okay it is like a bell shaped curve just for fun let us go to some more time steps 
and you can see that the wave is moving in the forward direction also but this numerical simulation is uh, not at all good for someone who is trying to know how this wave will behave <clears throat> So is there any question up to this point? Okay. Now let me try CFL equal to 1.1. Let's see what an unstable solution looks like. Let us go to a small number of time steps. Run it again. Okay. You can see what happened here. Wave height is negative. And uh, here it exceeded 2 or 2.5. So this is not at all physical. If I go to some more time steps, you will see that it blows up after 100 time steps. Let's see what happens. So this is something like 8 into 10 to the power 6. Of course, that cannot be a realistic solution. So CFL number has to be less than 1, 0 0.9 will also do. Yeah. And also increasing CFL implies that you are increasing your speed for a fixed delta T and delta X. Delta T and delta X are fixed here. You are going to same number of time steps. So either you are going to either you are taking larger time steps or you are increasing your speed or time steps may be less okay because there is a factor of c there so that's why for larger cfl value the wave has reached uh, x equal to 1 almost for the same number of time steps We have kept BT constant here, you can see that. Now let us plot this for CFL point five as well. So let us plot for both point 0.9 and point 0.5. This is for point 0.9. And point 0.5. Okay. And this is a first order wave equation. So there is no reflection from the walls. This wave can only travel in one direction. If you want reflection from the wall and wave traveling in both the directions, positive and negative, you should have a second order wave equation. All right. Now, just to test uh, uh, this central difference scheme, let us try that also. I plus 1 minus I minus 1. Let us keep the CFL number as 0 0.5. And let's go to I equal to 10. You can see this is a very unrealistic solution, unphysical. So central difference doesn't work. Okay. So now we'll go back to uh, some theory. So to estimate 
how much error has been accrued uh, for n time steps let's say we can write the total amplitude error or dissipation you can say after n time steps you can write that as a0 which is the initial uh, amplitude initial wave amplitude in this case it was 1 then for the exact solution power n minus that for the numerical solution power n this is the total amplitude error after n steps that you will have in your numerical simulation uh, why it is power n because let's say u at second time step divided by u at first time step that is ge okay and if you multiply this with u3 by u2 which is same as u2 by u1 and then multiply this by u4 by u3 and so on up to u n by u n minus 1 all of these will cancel out up to this point and you will get u n by u1 which is same as writing mod g e to the power n because you have multiplied n times. So here we found u n by u1 and multiplied that by a0, which is basically u1. It is the initial wave amplitude. So finally, you get u n. And similarly, this mod g n also tells you about the numerical amplitude after the n time n steps n time steps it can be time or any other step in general but here in these problems these are time steps okay so finally you get u n exact minus u at nth time step numerical so this is what it is error after n time steps similarly you can also find out the total dispersion error and again you should note that this depends on the mode which wave we are talking about it can be same for all the waves or it can be different if it depends on theta so now we'll write the total dispersion error after n steps so this is the relative phase shift and it keeps adding up there is no multiplication here so after n steps it is just n phi exact minus phi okay And there is one more concept known as relative phase shift. Which is defined as phi by phi e. So phi is for the numerical solution and phi e is for the exact differential equation. In this case, we saw that this is tan inverse 
माइनस न्यू साइन थीटा एक्चुअली डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस न्यू प्लस न्यू कॉस थीटा एंड वी नीड टू फाइंड फाइ एग्जैक्ट सो प्लीज फाइंड द फाइ एग्जैक्ट फॉर दिस we already derived mod g exact so this was mod g exact which was 1 can you find the phi exact from the definition of phi which is the phase of this uh, complex number g so find it and write in the chat window
it should not take uh, much time okay so what is ge it is already written here you can see ge is e raised to the power minus iota kc delta t so what is phi e you can see the definition of phi from here if g can be written as mod g e raised to the power j phi which is this mod g e in this case is 1 1 multiplied by e raised to the power j theta or j phi so phi is minus k c delta t so we can write that here if you want to write it in terms of the cfl number that is new then you can multiply and divide by delta x then c delta t by delta x is new and k delta x is theta so phi e becomes minus theta nu okay let me write uh, this mod ge uh, mod ge we have already written actually uh, that is one and mod g we have written here one minus nu plus nu cos theta square plus nu sin theta whole square in this case if nu is exactly equal to 1 then what do you get as mod g from here you can see that for nu equal to 1 1 minus 1 that will go away you will get nu that is 1 so cos square theta plus sin square theta square root that is your mod g that is the numerical mod g numerical amplification factor which is equal to 1 for all theta values what about phi by phi e the relative phase shift so you can see that the exact phi e is minus theta whereas the numerical phi this phi that is tan inverse of minus sin theta divided by 1 minus 1 that goes away by cos theta so tan inverse of uh, minus tan theta minus theta again so that also comes out to be 1 so you can see that for explicit scheme if you can have nu equal to 1 which is not possible because the solution will blow up okay exact by exactly keeping cfl number equal to 1 this explicit scheme will become unstable although theoretically we have seen that it is stable for less than or equal to 1 cfl 
but it will become unstable like we saw in the thermal conduction problem so ideally nu equal to 1 should have given us a good scheme that's why people try to use nu as close to 1 as possible from here you can also see that for nu that is cfl number between 0.5 and 1 you have leading phase error which means that the numerical simulation all the waves will be ahead of the uh, waves of the original solution and for new less than 0.5 it is lagging phase error and you can try running the code for these new values and see what the difference you get okay so now let us go to this uh, an implicit scheme and see the stability properties of those schemes let us try a btcs scheme btcs actually is unconditionally stable uh, for this first order wave equation generally implicit schemes are more stable so let us write that and we are not using any upwinding here we are simply writing the space derivative as a central difference uh, difference is there any question Okay. Okay. So we wrote it in uh, BTCS scheme. This comes out to be unconditionally stable. for any cfl number for any c delta t by delta x so what you can do is you can find the g for this it will come out to be and if you find the mod of this you will get the amplification for the numerical met numerical uh, difference equation and phi by phi e comes out to be sin theta by minus theta nu so now if you put nu equal to 1 you don't get phi by phi e equal to 1 Okay. So we can write mod g. Mod g you can calculate actually because g is already given here. Real part square plus imaginary part square, uh, whole square root. So now any scheme you write. Uh, you can write it in multiple ways okay this is, these are just uh, two three schemes that we talked about here what you do finally is you express the deviation from the actual solution as two graphs 
generally that's what people do these are polar plots that means the radius or radial coordinate this distance the length of this vector will show the magnitude of g or phi by phi e so let me plot it for g for different theta values so this angle is theta starting from 0 on this axis here to 180 on this axis here and this is one this is also one because the radius is one okay you get something like this for new equal to 1 you get a, a semi circle like this or actually this is not a semi circle just at new equal to 0 uh, for theta equal to 0 and 180 you get mod g equal to 1 but for all the other uh, theta values in between you can find out what it is so this will be an exercise for you to plot mod g versus theta for different new values you can do it in matlab very easily or any plotting software for different new values on a polar plot and similarly you plot phi by phi e which is the relative phase shift and what this will look like is something like this so for a particular theta value this is the value the length of this vector this is for new equal to 0.5 maybe so you can plot that also for different values of new and see which value of new uh, will give you mod g which is close to 1 so that there is minimal dissipation and also what value of new will give you minimum relative phase shift because you want to minimize both of them so if there is such a scheme and such a, a new value for that scheme which gives mod g equal to 1 for a wave equation because we know that the exact mod g is 1 mod g e and if it gives relative phase shift also equal to 1 then that scheme is best suited for simulating a wave equation and you can do a similar thing if you divide this by mod g e then both of them should be equal to 1 because we want both of them to match uh, the exact solution so you can do it for a thermal equation also thermal conduction equation you can plot these things and you can determine a scheme and a value of uh, these parameters new or in that case alpha delta t by delta x square which gives you these values equal to 1 for all possible theta okay is that clear if there is any question you can ask now okay so i'll be sending one more assignment this is one of the problems in the assignment that you have to plot mod g by mod g e and phi by phi e for this implicit btcs wave difference equation the second problem is that you have to do the same thing for a thermal conduction equation 
for btcs so assignment 2 first is first order wave equation btcs plot g by ge versus theta polar plot basically in polar coordinates and phi by phi e versus theta same thing polar plot then do the same thing for a thermal conduction equation which is also known as heat equation in short which is unsteady heat equation okay and do this for ftcs and btcs same thing so these three sets of plots you have to make okay that's all for today thank you